The great gods of comedy decided that they were going to create the perfect comedian in Rodney Dangerfield. They concocted a goofy little showstopper to make people laugh for years to come, even after his death. True story. I mean, it's not easy being me. When I was born, a doctor told my mother I did all I could, but he pulled through anyway. <laughs> okay, so that likely isn't how Rodney Dangerfield came into existence, but we wouldn't blame you for believing it. During his life, the foul-mouthed, slack-jawed New Yorker with eyeballs that practically jutted out past his nose was liable to put you into a coma from laughing so hard. His audacity and crudeness truly knew no bounds. While most of us have seen Caddyshack, Back to School, or Easy Money plenty of times, true Dangerfield fans can probably recite his iconic stand-up routines from front to back if asked to do so. No matter how many times he lamented that he couldn't get no respect, the world of show business still remembers him as one of the greatest comedians to have ever lived. I got no respect the day I was born. Really? No respect. The doctor picked me up and smacked me? I found out the nurse, she got a few in too. <laughs> According to biography, Rodney Dangerfield, birth name Jacob Cohen, was born on November 22, 1921 in Babylon, New York. He took a vested interest in comedy at an early age and started performing stand-up bits during his teenage years under the moniker Jack Roy. But he was forced to take a hiatus from comedy after his financial struggles started to pile up. By the 1950s, with a wife and family to support, he took on a career in sales instead. But by the mid-60s, he started moonlighting again as a stand-up comedian while still working in sales during the day. Finally, his seemingly long-lost dream of becoming a working comedian started to gradually reappear in his life. And this time, he wasn't pulling any punches. He re-emerged on the scene with a renewed sense of ambition and a brand new identity to go with it. Enter Rodney Dangerfield. For most aspiring comedians, taking on the world of show business in your 40s might seem risky, but Dangerfield remained undeterred by the odds and pressed forward all the same. Then after appearing on The Ed Sullivan Show in the early 1970s, his career took off. He opened up his own nightclub, stormed stand-up stages across the country, started appearing in movies, and ultimately carved out a whole new era in comedy. Later on, Dangerfield would even take Broadway by storm with Rodney Dangerfield on Broadway in 1988. They want me to take oral exams and all my subjects. If I don't take them, they're going to kick me out. And if I take them, who knows where they'll kick me. Biography also reports that around the turn of the millennium, Dangerfield's long-standing health problems started to take a turn for the worse. In August of 2004, he underwent heart surgery after mounting vascular complications put him under the doctor's scalpel once again. He'd already been through two major surgeries, once in 2000 and again in 2003, and unfortunately suffered a stroke during the procedure. After being in a coma for nearly two months, Dangerfield passed away on October 5th. Shortly after his tragic death, Dangerfield's autobiography, It's Not Easy Being Me, A Lifetime of No Respect, But Plenty of Sex and Drugs, hit bookshelves. Even in the throes of back-to-back -back surgeries and his ever-increasing health hurdles, the honorary King of Zingers pressed on with his work, with his final memoir being an ode to his resilience as an artist and a performer. He was never one to let anything get in the way of making people laugh, even if that thing was sickness and death. I broke up my psychiatrist too last week. He told me I'm going crazy. I said to him, if you don't mind, like a second opinion. He said, all right, you're ugly too. <laughs> you might say that Rodney Dangerfield saved his greatest joke for last. According to the website Find a Grave, the beloved comedian was laid to rest at Westwood Memorial Park in Los Angeles, California. Along with his stage name, there are five singular words inscribed upon his tombstone that will keep people laughing for all time to come. There goes the neighborhood which mockingly suggests that the surrounding community of individuals, both living and dead, is doomed to suffer his presence forever. You gotta respect that.